Hi, everyone. We're going to start in just a minute. Hope you all had a really lovely day. Hi, everyone. Again, I'm thrilled to welcome you all to tonight's webinar hosted by Stash. Who am I? You might be asking. I'm Sarah Spagnolo. I'm managing editor here at Stash, and it's my absolute pleasure to have all of you here. I'm coming to you live tonight from our office in New York City. The webinar today is part of our Quick Start Your Stash program, which is helping people get started on their path to achieving financial goals this new year, 2024. Many of you are here because you want to seize the new year and learn more about what to do to take advantage of Stash and all we offer to help people invest in yourself and also achieve your goals. Today, we're going to give you tips for getting started, thinking about your goals, and taking great next steps. As a registered investment advisor, here to provide guidance for you and our customers that's always in your best interest, I have to share the disclaimer that the information we're sharing today is purely educational. We are not providing any financial, legal, tax, or investment advice. If you have questions for our panelists, please submit them to me via the Q&A feature. You can find the button on the bottom of your screen. I'll be collecting them and sharing them with the hosts in the last 25 or so minutes of this chat. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Thank you so much for participating. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our hosts and our panelists. I'll start with Liza Landsman, Stash's CEO. She has an illustrious background in consumer financial services. Plus, she worked at Jet.com and Walmart. I'm so thrilled she's here with us today. Brandon Krieg is the co-founder and head of business development at Stash. After nearly eight years as CEO, he recently handed over the reins to our current CEO, Liza Landsman. He now oversees business development. In a couple minutes, you'll also meet Lauren McKenzie as our head of design. She helps create the product that all of you are using to invest in personal portfolios, retirement portfolios, and so much more. And lastly, Jalad Salik, representing our engineering team. Nothing gets shipped unless Jalad has approved it. He's also here to be an incredible resource for all of you. Together, they will take you through our app and the best ways to use it. Thanks again so much to all of you for taking the time to be here with us. I'll let Liza take it away. Sarah, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Um, and thanks to all of you for making time in your busy schedules to spend some time with us and hear about Stash um, and how we can support you in your journey. Um, I joined Stash just a little less than a year ago, um, and I was really excited to join this amazing team on its amazing mission, really because I grew up in a family of hardworking Americans like many of you that struggled to make ends meet, um, and it took me a really long time to figure out how to start getting my own money to work harder for me um, day after day. And when I met the great team at Stash and saw the work they were doing and the opportunity presented in the platform, I knew it's where I wanted to spend all of my um, working waking hours trying to make a difference for a lot of other American families as well. Um, it's part of the reason that we're here today to kick off the year with Quick Start Your Stash, because so many people um, start their year making great resolutions about how they're going to try and improve their lives for themselves and their families in the coming year. I think the stat is nearly 40% of Americans make New Year's resolutions um, and set goals each year. And almost that same percentage, almost 40% of them, that resolution is to save more money that year. Um, and in fact, more than a third of stash survey respondents um, start the year feeling buyer's remorse for how much money they spent in the holidays. And so these two things coming together felt like a great time um, for us to actually share some of the ways stash can help, some tips, some framing on how to think about um, just sort of getting yourself off to a great fresh start um, in 2024. Because um, we know that Americans today worry about money more than almost anything else in the world, even in these somewhat tumultuous times. 
Um, and that's really why we're here to help. We have a great panel of my Stash colleagues here today um, to tell you about Stash um, and what we're building now and into the future. And so with that, I will turn it over to our co-founder, Brandon. Brandon, over to you. All right, cool. Thank you, Liza. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Brandon Krieg. Um, I helped start Stash. Uh, oh, gosh, it's been almost nine years ago now. And there is nothing more than I love most than to speak to our awesome Stash subscribers. And I'm really, really looking forward to tonight to answer questions and just talk about all things Stash and money. Um, but before that, I wanted to uh, turn it over to Lauren and Jalad to talk more about the product and the awesome direction we're going in. So over to you. Thank you, Brandon. I'm going to pull up my screen. And um, hi, everyone. I'm Lauren McKenzie. I lead the product design and research team at Stash. I live in Boston, Massachusetts with my husband and two kids. And before I start going into the demo and sharing the screens, I wanted to just give a quick overview of our mission and our vision here at Stash, because I think they're really powerful and it's what has brought all of us to, to Stash and I think it's worth sharing. So our mission is to empower people to invest and build better lives. So we say empower people here and what's really powerful about you know this moment and being on this webinar is this is all of you. We really want to empower all of you and we're here to empower all of you to invest and to build those better lives. And like Liza said, this is something that we think all, all hardworking Americans should have access to. Everyone should be able to invest and be empowered to make those, deci those investment decisions and build those better, better lives that you want to build. And then our vision. So our vision is to turn money into a source of hope and opportunity. And all of you, you started with Stash for some, some reason. You're here listening to this for some reason. So whether that's to learn more about investing or to make more money or to become a better investor, whatever that is, there's some kind of hope there. And I love how Liza started with um, you know, talking about New Year's resolutions, because I think that's also a really a time of hope that people have. And again, it's wanting to create that better life for themselves. And that's the vision that we have to, to have Stash help you turn money into that source of hope and opportunity to build that life that you want. So the way that we do that is Stash aims to teach you two things. One is why you should be investing and how to think about investing. And then the other is how to actually invest. And so the why is thinking about how, how you should think about investing and teaching you how to think about investing, how to set a goal, and then how to set a plan of attack to achieve that goal, again, to get that better life that you're trying to build. And then the how to invest is where we want to provide you with really quick, easy to access um, financial products and tools and advice that directly meets your financial needs. Again, this is all about helping you build that better life, but it's teaching you the two things of why you should be investing, keeping that front and center, and then how to do that and how to have access to that. So I'm going to hand it over to Jalad, and he's going to walk you through some screens within our product and show you what it looks like. How you doing, everybody? My name is Jalad. I'm a QA lead at Stash. Um, I've been here for a little over six years. Um, me and my team are responsible for making sure the quality of the application is top notch before it's just released to you. I am located in New Jersey. So we'll be going through some of the features in our application. Um, morning. Thank you, Lauren. Um, here is a look at our guided experience. Once you have signed up for our when you, once you have signed up, we have offered two ways to get started. Uh, you can let us invest for you, or you can invest on your own. We recommend the smart portfolio, uh, but regardless of what you select, we provide guidance throughout the process. Here's a look at the smart portfolio. With uh, our award-winning managed account, here you set up your account, um, pretty much let us handle all the investment for you investing for you. We set it aside, um, auto investing, auto rebalancing, set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about any timing the market. You just allow small amounts 
to add up over time. Aside, um, aside from their smart portfolio, we do offer other portfolios as well. Uh, we have our personal retirement, whether it's a Roth or traditional, uh, and our custodial account. With custodial, if you want, you can set up for your kids or even your nieces and nephews. Um, we offer, with our portfolios, we offer thousands of investment choices. So you can select any investment you like and get started there. When you look at our investments, you'll see that the names look a little different. We try to avoid the long, confusing names. So we cured our names to a more fun, uh, appealing titles. So you'll notice them as you go through the investment. Once you have set up your portfolios, we have a very simplified home version over here for you. It provides you with guidance. Um, it also gives you quick actions that you can take, such as adding cash to your portfolios, looking for looking through our investment selections, setting up a auto invest and get our stock back card. With our stock back card, it's, pers it's one of my personal favorite features in our application. It's uh, earning fractional shares in your everyday purchases. Say if you were doing some renovation, you would Home Depot, make a big purchase. You can get a fractional share of Home Depot. If you don't like doing big brand shopping, if you like your little local mom and pop shops, uh, pizzeria, corner store, you get stock back. You get stock back as on those as well. But instead of going to a random place, they'll go to a default ETF, which you can change later to a ETF that is more appealing to you or even a single stock that you believe in. Not just that, sorry, let me mind going back one more slide. Um, let's not forget that if you add this, if you add our card to your subscriptions, you get a 3% stock back on such as the, on things like Disney Plus, Netflix, or even Spotify. As I mentioned earlier, we will guide you through the whole process. And just because we have all these features where you can invest for yourself or we can invest for you, learning never stops, right? So we offer wide range of content, articles, videos, all from our experts. The app is built to help you learn as you go. Next up, Lauren's gonna go over what's coming next in our stash ecosystem. Lauren. Thanks, and thanks for walking through that. So hopefully you can see that we're really proud of the product that we have. Hopefully you've been experiencing it and you've been using it, but we also know that there's always room for improvement and we always want to be creating better and better experiences for you all. So I want to give you a sneak peek into what is coming next. So what you're seeing here, these are just designs. These are not in the, they're not in the Stash app yet, but they're things that are coming and they should be out in the next, in the next few months. And the point of what we're trying to do in pushing the designs forward are we're trying to really get into that why you should be investing. So I talked a few minutes about the why to invest and the how to invest. We want to make sure that we're bringing the why front and center and helping you set goals, set the goals that you want to achieve, but also showing you progress and how you're doing on those goals. And we want to celebrate the progress that you've made. Taking that first step is a huge thing to celebrate. Investing is a huge thing to celebrate. Investing on a schedule, also a huge thing to celebrate. So we really want to get that into the app a little bit more. And then if you if you move off track at any point, which we know, you know, that happens to everyone. We all move off track at certain points of trying to hit our goals. We're going to give you advice on how to get back on track. And we're going to give you advice on how to maybe reach your goals even faster. And then once you've hit one goal, we can help you through setting new goals. Again, this all goes back to that mission and vision that we have of helping you create that better life through investing. So thanks for letting us share. I'm going to hand it back over to Sarah. Again, everyone, I'm going to invite uh, Brandon and Liza back to do a Q&A session. Again, I want to remind you all that if you have your own questions, we're going to be taking them live and we'll try to do our best to answer all of them. Um, you can use the Q&A functionality at the bottom of the screen. But let's start uh, with lies that we can. I have one question. How would I invest with $100 every month? Um, a great question. And it's a great way to get started. Although any amount that um, feels right to you is a good amount to get started with. I would say um, my best way to answer that question 
is to say um, diversified portfolio. So Jalad talked about our smart portfolio function and capability earlier. Um, simply said, that's our managed portfolio where we create a diversified portfolio for you that we rebalance on your behalf. So you can, as he so rightly put it, set and forget it. Um, it allows you to kind of uh, do the least sexy, most successful thing that we have seen in the market that's like time tested, tried and true, which is invest um, a consistent amount over time. So being in the market consistently over time. So you're kind of buying all the different, we always say like, you're not trying to time the market, you're trying to use time as a weapon in the market. Um, in a diverse portfolio with a buy and hold strategy, super boring, super powerful. That is the best way to think about growing your assets over time. And the great thing about something like a smart portfolio, although many people like with their personal portfolios to pick their own stocks, is that we have like our investing staff here that does nothing but think about this and has actually outperformed most of the robo advised portfolios out there. Um, thinking all day, every day, just about how to make sure we're keeping you super diverse, super balanced, and manage toward the risk pro risk profile that you share with us as you come on board. So if that if it were me, that was that is the approach that I would take um, in doing it. Thanks for the question, Sarah, and thank you for those who submitted that question. All right, Brandon, I'm going to give you this one. If I'm using Stash, can I maximize that for the long term? Well, that's a good question. You know, it's 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 like a it's a really good question, but it's a big question. And I think about that. You know, you think about the long term. Like investing can be very very complicated, and or at least feel like a lot of people feel very overwhelmed by this stuff. And the answer is yes. And it's just to build on what Liza just said. To be honest, it's about the long term. You know, like thinking that you can maximize for the long term by day trading over the next week, that's not going to happen, right? Most people that day trade lose their money. So when you think about the long term, it's about steady recurring deposits, which is why my favorite feature of Stash is Auto Stash. By turning on Auto Stash and just setting up just small amounts of money that you can afford, but doing it on a regular basis, you're actually investing in yourself and you're you're creating a habit that's very, very positive. And over the long term, the thing that that really is the most powerful thing for long term is compounding. Because as you're adding money on a regular basis, that money is compounding on itself. So when I think about investing, you know, I think about the account that I opened, you know, when I was, well, I'm much older now, but when I was in my young 20s, and I still to this day contribute to that account. Uh, 30 years later, 20, uh, 28 years later. And I think it's really powerful to think long-term, but to do that, take actions now and just do it on a regular basis. It's it's a very, very powerful thing, auto stash. Thanks, Brandon. Um, I want to go back to some of Liza's points because we got a handful of questions about smart portfolio. So Ernesto, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions together here. Ernesto said, I only have a personal portfolio I see the option to set up a smart portfolio. What happens if I enable it, but I see two portfolios now? First question. Um, Howard says, can you set up a smart portfolio with a portion of your stash funds? So again, asking about the bifurcation of both of the portfolios. What fees do you charge for the smart portfolio? Um, so maybe uh, Liza, you wanna start there and you can answer some of those questions together. Sure. Um, so you can have both a smart portfolio and a personal portfolio. And just think of the basic differences. Smart portfolio, we're managing for you. Personal portfolio, you're managing for yourself. You're picking those stocks or ETFs on your own. You see both of them side by side when you're in the Stash app, if you have both. Um, so you can see their performance right next to each other. Um, we don't charge an incremental fee for smart portfolio. So basically, it it's part of your subscription. Um, and I would say, you know, this is really one of those, like, um, a little bit of the, like, chocolate and vanilla questions, which is, I think many people, particularly as they are starting their journey as investors, really lean toward a smart portfolio because it's a great way 
to kind of like learn by observing as you're putting your money to work in the market um, without having to invest all the time that is required to like learn about which stocks to pick, right? We provide a lot of great education and tools, whether it's a diversification tool to help you understand how to diversify uh, or diversification calculator. Um, but it is time consuming um, to do the work and do the reading that's required to kind of feel as informed as many people want to feel. And so having a smart portfolio is a great way to start. Many people who want to actually like, you know, pull all the levers themselves um, and pick very specific stocks or ETFs to like, you know, compose their own portfolios, choose personal. The thing is, um, you don't have to choose. They both are part of your subscription and you can do both. So let's say you want to put the bulk of your, you sort of say, I want to put the bulk of my money in a smart portfolio because I want to rely on the team at Stash to manage this and make these choices. But there are some like areas of real deep personal interest for me, maybe clean energy um, or... I don't know, manufacturing is something you've always been fascinated by. <laughs> want to invest in that category, but we maybe not like, don't have a big allocation for heavy industrial manufacturing in the smart portfolio, but you want to support that through your personal investing, you can do that. And one of the things that is great um, on the platform is because we also provide fractional shares, which means some stocks Let's say a stock might have uh, a price of, um, I'm trying to think like Berkshire Hathaway um, is a stock or let's say like Google has share price that might be in, in excess of the amount you are investing every month. So if you were investing $50 a month, Google is more than $50 a share. You can still buy Google we just buy on your behalf a fraction of a share. And so it allows you to kind of um, buy into great stocks and great companies, um, even if the share price is in excess of what you can invest in. And that's a way to think about kind of that mix between personal and smart. I don't I just, know, Brad, anything you'd add there? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can only add to it because I agree with everything. I think the one thing, like I think about myself and, the way that I invest, like I have the bulk in smart portfolio, but I do to Liza's point, like there are things that interest me. And, you know, I reach, I go through periods and I know a lot of stashers too, where you'll, you'll have a very clear idea of what you want to do and what you want to invest in. And then there'll be times you're like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to choose. And sometimes new investors, if any of you are new to stash, you might, you know, like, let's be honest, stash was built because most people don't learn about money at home or learn about it at school. And so we want to make sure that smart portfolio has you covered if you don't know what to do, or you want Stash to do the heavy lifting for you, as Liza said. But there are times that you might say, you know what, I want to do something myself. So I, I like to think about them as, you know, smart and the personal investor, my non-retirement assets. So that's the money that's not in retirement. And then I have my retirement account. So I think they work really well together. Um, but for me personally, I have the bulk in smart portfolio. That's a great answer. And, and thank you so much because so many people had questions about whether they could have both personal and smart or retirement and personal and smart. And clearly the answer is yes, you can have all of those things at the same time. Um, so I had, there was a great question from Erica, which I feel like it's, you know, is so truthful. And so many people feel this way at, at the beginning of the journey, which is I want to start investing with Stash, but I feel really insecure. And what makes Stash different and more appealing than other apps? And Brandon, since you had the idea to start Stash nine years ago, maybe you can speak about the vision and what is a differentiator for us. And you said the question came from Erica, is that right? That's right. Well, Erica, when I mean, we built Stash for you, to be honest, because there are you know tens and tens of millions of people just like me when I was much younger and you, Erica, where people don't know what to do because we're not learning this stuff at school. We're not learning it at parents. And and from our parents. And let's be honest, most wealth managers don't want to talk to us. They want to talk to people who are worth tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. So if you walk into a local bank or you walk to the wealth manager and say, hey, I want to get started. I have, you know, 50 bucks or five bucks. Normally it's like, look, you can leave. 
or some version of leave. And so I think the fact that you're here, number one, is amazing. The fact that you have a stash account is amazing. And the journey starts with $5. And there are millions and millions of stories now on stash today of people that start with $5 that use auto stash, that invest for the long term, that make this a very positive habit. You don't need to pay attention to the daily ebbs and flows of the market. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. It's up to you to focus on small investments over a long term, but do them on a, on a regular frequency. That's the most important thing. And so auto stash, again, I can't, I say auto stash, I might just get a tattoo of auto stash on me at some point, but because auto stash is so powerful. But for you, Erica, I mean, if you just don't know what to do and you're intimidated by it, as Eliza said before, and as I said before, a smart portfolio is a great way to get started and you'll start building that confidence. And you could also add you know, some ETFs or stocks if you feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, smart will have you covered. And one of the things that makes smart so powerful <clears throat> is that all of, all of us that are on this call or the Zoom went through onboarding. And when you go through onboarding, you ask a lot of questions. And sometimes people are like, why are you asking all those questions? And the, the questions are really, the answers to your questions are used to make you a risk profile. And that risk profile is basically like a, like your, like a compass or like a map. And it's the destination that you need to get to. So if you're young and you can take a lot of risk, you'll be an aggressive investor. Smart's going to adapt to that for you. And as your situation changes, as you get older, or, you know, you lose your job or get a bigger job, Smart's going to adjust with you over the years. And I just think it's really powerful. So Erica, start with Smart and just gain your confidence and it will come over time. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Sorry. No, Brandon. No question. <laughs> Brandon gives amazing words of encouragement. He's also an, an awesome dad, you can tell. Um, all right, so here's a, here's a great grouping of questions. Kelly asks, how do you decide what is best for a diverse automatic investment? Um, we had a question, how would I invest in ETFs with $100 a month? You can see that I'm gonna suggest that diversity um, can be found with ETFs, but I'll help Liza talk a little bit more about that. From Pamela, will they speak about the best way to invest to get more out of your money? Maybe Liza, I'll hand that over to you. I mean, we're going to sound a little bit like broken records here. I mean, I love that people are focusing in on diversity because diversity in your portfolio is really like the key to long-term sort of good outcomes. I would say, particularly if you're just getting started, again, this is the broken record part, like um, mm -hmm. SMART is a great way to go because we've already done the like heavy lifting for you of creating a... Like think about it. it's a it's a beautiful bouquet of very different diverse ETF ec and equity flowers. Like we have already picked them in the garden and picked in at least in our minds like the freshest best smelling flowers that you can have in <clears throat> your bouquet. Um, but I would also say um, it's really important when you think about. Um, what Brandon has referred to is like auto stash, which is you want sort of diversity in um, what's in your portfolio. That is like the stocks and ETFs and equities you pick or that we are picking on your behalf to go in there, but you also want time diversity, right? Because um, as Brandon talked about, the market moves up and down. And it's not just that like, you know, it's a, it's not just that like, it's a good idea to not look at your portfolio obsessively every day because the market moves kind of mercurially. I would just say like, it's just like much better for your happiness to like recognize that it's gonna move up and down. Um, <clears throat> and it, it is like almost anything in life. If you try and time it perfectly, you're not gonna nail the dismount. What you wanna do is think about having both um, product diversity, that is the ETFs and equities in your portfolio and time diversity in your portfolio, which is why we think Autostash is so powerful because you just set up a frequency for small investments over time. That actually provides, like when you look at how portfolios have performed over the last three decades in the market, there's just much better performance for portfolios that have been um, investments made consistently over time because you get diversity on two dimensions 
that is the product mix and the time mix, because I don't like this expression because it, it's buy the dip. But if you're buying over time, when the market goes up, yeah, maybe sometimes you're buying closer to the top, but it also means on balance, you're buying when the market goes down. And so you get that um, richness, literally and metaphorically, of the compounding of those two kinds of diversity. Um, and that, I would say, like, those are the two ingredients. So you want a, a smart mix of the stuff and you want a time mix. And so that's why instead of trying to think like, oh, I'm going to personally try and time exactly when is the right moment to buy, just pick a time interval, whether it's every week, twice a month, once a month, once a quarter, that you're going to just like keep adding. And that's why small amounts over time, you think about it in the best possible way. It's like um, a tiny snowball that starts at the top of the hill. And as it rolls down, it's just gathering more and more speed and mass. And so you end up with something really big. Um, and that's the way to think about growing your portfolio over time. Yeah, I, the only thing I could add is like, I just think it's important to note that nobody has a crystal ball and nobody can time the market. So just when you think the market's going to go up, the market might drop a little bit. When you think the market's going to go down, the market will go up. The market will always do the thing that you don't think it's going to do. So it's always about timing time in the market and not trying to time the market. And I think that's a really important add on to what you said, Liza. Like people always think about, well, maybe the market's too high to invest. Okay, maybe it is, but it, you know, the market could go higher, the market can go lower, but you don't know. And so the consistency of investing over you know, just continuing to invest through all of it is the best way to invest. Yeah, my husband and I always joke about this, but when we went on our first date, we went to this restaurant. Um, this is date, aging myself a little bit. We went to a restaurant um, that was in the financial district in New York, and it had this little placard on the table with the specials. And it said, the prices on the specials are good until the Dow hits 3,000. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, Brandon's laughing because he knows that was a long time ago. But when you think about that, like, all right, so 30 years ago, Dow's certainly gone up a lot since then. But at the time, we thought we were like at the top of the market. Yeah. I know. The price of your the price of your steak has probably also gone up, Liza, just for the price record. Of steak has definitely gone up. We were not buying steak in those days. I think <laughs> we were buying a grilled cheese, but yes. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Brandon, related to the points you were making, someone asks, if I noticed a stock decreasing in value from 10% to 8%, at what point do I hit the sell button? And also, how do you feel about trading? Uh, wow, that's a good question. I mean, look, I spent my entire career on a trading desk, um, on a you know electronic algorithmic trading desk from 1998 on and until Stash. And uh, I think trading is great if you're a computer. Trading is great if you have an incredible amount of information. Uh, and it's it's good if you just have a lot of order flow and you're a wholesaler. I think it's really hard as a retail investor to be a day trader. I have seen too many people get completely wiped out over the years day trading because it's just impossible to predict the market. And you know, I have I have uh to your, you know, I think it was eight percent to seven percent, forget the numbers, but a little bit of drop in the market. You know, one thing that I feel very honored and blessed to have had is, is, is a long career on Wall Street. And I have traded through multiple wars, multiple presidents, uh, the Great Recession, 9-11, the dot-com crash, uh, at stash through COVID. I, I could keep going. So many things. And, you know, people be like, oh, my God, the market's going to fall apart. And also, by the way, so many good things, too. It's not all bad. And but through all of it everyone's the one consistent thing that I figured out is just keep investing right through it in small incremental amounts. The one, the one thing I'll say is like, look, if, if you're looking at whatever it is you own and I'm not giving you investment advice, I think this is just general good advice. If, if the, whatever it is went from eight to 7% because there's a bankruptcy looming in the company or there's a systemic issue or, you know, they lost all their contracts. I, I don't know. I, I don't know the company so I can you know, be general. I think maybe, sure, you should say to yourself, should I own the business? But if you still believe in the business and, or the ETF or the bond, whatever it is, and it's still part of a diversified portfolio, because you know we don't believe that any one stock should be more than 2% of your portfolio, 
then I think it's okay. Um, just if you believe in it, just keep buying it and practice what's called dollar cost averaging, as Liza mentioned before. Just keep investing on a regular basis and participate at lots and lots of prices. So if this is, if you believe in the business or whatever the ticker is, then you can buy it at these levels. If it drops more, you'll keep buying at those levels. And as it goes up, hopefully you'll buy it at those levels. But you're going to, at the end of the day, you're going to blend, as Liza said, your prices. So like I said, no one has a crystal ball. Nobody knows. You can only look at the last, you know, call it 100 years of the S&P. And again, you know, history never isn't uh, guaranteed to repeat itself, but history can be a guide. And, you know, dollar cost averaging and just continuing to invest in a diversified portfolio, either yourself or through smart is, is just good business. All right, believe it or not, we're getting towards the end of our time. And there've been a handful of questions about the stock back debit card. So I wanna be sure oh. that we get into some of the details here. Liza, maybe you'll take some of these. First question from Kevin, do you have a list of what you can get stock back on Tamar? When I pay with my stock back card, will I have 3% back on stock every time? Does it have to be online or in in-store payments included too? And just generally, can you please go into more details on how the stock back card works? Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. So there are a bunch of really specific questions there, but just to frame it for everyone, just to make sure we're all grounded in the same thing. When you swipe your stock back debit card out in the real world or online, any place where debit cards are accepted, um, we are going to give you stock back. The percentage of that stock is going stock back is going to vary based on where you are shopping. So 3% um, is on things, mostly subscription services like Netflix. Um, I don't know why I can't think of any other streaming subscription services at Disney the moment. Plus. Thank you, Disney Plus um, and things like that. Um, and then you get uh, different percentages also based on what subscription tier you're in. Um, it kind of doesn't matter if it's online or in the real world. As long as the swipe goes through, you're going to get it, but that percentage may differ a little bit based on exactly where you're shopping. Um, and we use, as we talked about a little bit earlier, fractional shares, because let's say you're getting 1% back and you've bought something at or Google for $50, that obviously 1% of $50 is not the equivalent of the price of even one whole share of Google, but it is a great way to actually supplement building your portfolio. It's a great way to learn about stocks because oftentimes you might swipe someplace, not even realize it's a publicly traded company. Like if you, there are a bunch of restaurants that are like owned by a restaurant conglomerate um, and you, you might not even know until you see where your stock back is posting that, hey, out in the real world, your dollars are going to support this, you know, buying your blooming onions. So um, that is a great way to use it. I would say a couple of things to think about um, with Stockback. It is often a way, um, even before maybe you're ready to start investing on your own, to start sort of bringing to life the fact that the equity markets are around us everywhere. Um, and it's sort of a great way to bring it to life. It's also a way to actually remind yourself that when you are spending your hard earned dollars, they're actually, that money is going toward like specific public companies, whether we think about that or not. Though obviously, um, and Jalad mentioned this, sometimes if you are swiping at a place that's not a public company, like I go shop at a little grocery store on my corner all the time. It's just a single mom and pop shop. Um, and I have designated as the place where my stock back goes um, match the market, which sort of gets me into an ETF um, for my non-public company swipes that kind of keeps me, that ETF keeps me like on par with a blend that looks to us like the rest of the market. Um, I forget there was one other specific question around this. Oh, do we have a list? Yes, you can find um, on Stash a list of all of the companies that are available for stock back. Yeah. I mean, it works at 11 million. I think it's 11 million <clears throat> merchant stocks. Anywhere MasterCard is accepted, Stockback works. Uh, I think you asked a few others, like, does it work in store or or online? It, wherever you can use your card, it works. 
And like Liza said, if it's a public company and there's a match on stash, you'll get the shares in the public company. If it's not, if it is not, you'll get your default. I'm also match the market for what it's worth. That's just a coincidence because we think about yeah. these things the same way. The general market is the general market. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everyone here. Um, it's 740. So it's time for us to wrap up. Um, there was a question about where you can get more advice. And I want to say that, of course, there's plenty of advice in the app and the app is built to give people guidance at every turn. Uh, but we will also have a webinar frequently um, throughout this entire year. So please stay tuned for the next one. Um, I want to thank all of you who spent the last 45 minutes with us, who learned from stash experts so you can make the most out of your stash. As a reminder, this information we shared today is purely educational. We're not providing any financial, legal, tax, or investment advice. We have to say that. Thank you to everyone for coming. Look out for an invite, as I said, to the next one in two weeks on the topic of achieving financial goals with a certified financial planner. I'm going to pull up our end screen, and I want to tell you all that I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much.